Hi everyone, it's Miss Robin here at Mount Vernon Elementary reading Dr. Seuss's Horse Museum. Now this story was written by Theodore Geisel. We know him as Dr. Seuss. It was illustrated and put into print after he was no longer living. So Andrew Joyner finished the illustrations. He's the artist that did the pictures in the book but it definitely has a Dr. Seuss feel. This book is about art and visiting a museum and how everyone can see things differently. So here we go, Dr. Seuss's Horse Museum. Dr. Seuss's Horse Museum illustrated by Andrew Joyner. Art. What's it all about? This is what art is about. Art is when an artist looks at something, like a horse, for instance, and they see something in that horse that excites them. So they do something about it. They tell you about it in any one of a number of ways. Artists have been excited by horses for as long as there have been artists. But what an artist tells us about horses and how they tell us is different for every artist. What an artist sees in a horse depends on many different things. Their background, likes and dislikes, you name it. So come with me. Let's look at how different artists have seen horses. Maybe we can find some new ways of looking at them ourselves. Look it over, think it over, talk it over. When most people look at me, they just see me like this. But when an artist looks at me, they see a million other things. Can you? Some artists look at a horse and see outlines. To other artists like this Chinese sculptor, a horse is not an outline at all. A horse is bulk a solid form. A Japanese artist looked at a horse. What he saw was beautiful lines, beautiful lines from head to tail. Some artists look at a horse and find color. Other artists are interested in shape. This artist looked at a horse and saw strength. Look at that boys and girls, how he portrayed the strength of the horse working to pull that heavy load right up the hill. These artists looked and they saw speed. Horses in motion and photographs and racing horses. A Spaniard named Velasquez painted horses by the dozens. He saw them as something for kings and princes to sit on while he painted them. Velasquez worked for the kings and princes. 
He never got any money from the horses. This painting is by a Frenchman named Maisonier. Horses to him were something necessary to carry generals into battle. He loved to paint generals going into battle. To keep the horse, to him the horse was a jeep in the days before the jeep was invented. On the rock walls of a cave in France nearly 22,000 years ago, someone painted this horse by the light of a fire. What did the cave artist see in the horse? We don't know. It's a mystery. What do you think? 2,000 years ago in Greece, artists looked at horses and imagined them with wings. Pegasus was an immortal flying horse in Greek mythology. Greek artists painted horses with wings as symbols for ideas, like immortality, that are hard to show in a picture. Immortality, boys and girls, means something never dies. It lives forever. Just a symbol of what they thought that meant. 500 years ago in Persia, people thought a horse was for having fun on. And that's what the Persian artists saw when they looked at horses. 500 years ago in Italy, the artist Raphael looked at a horse. He thought that a horse was for fighting dragons on. Ooh, see the dragon there chasing behind the horse? Of course, some artists looked at horses and wanted to paint them just as they appeared in the natural world doing things that horses really do. We call this kind of art realistic. Other artists looked at horses and tried to capture them in a moment of time. We call this style of art impressionism. Impressionist art often has a soft, slightly out of focus appearance. Then we come to what people call modern art. Some people call this crazy stuff. Maybe they're right, maybe they're wrong, but these are paintings, drawings, and sculptures that show what certain artists imaged, imagined when they looked at a horse. So please look at them very carefully. There are lots of ways of looking at things. Maybe these pictures have something to tell you. Look around uh, at all of these images. I think if you look carefully, you begin, begin to get the idea of a horse. And the horse is sitting there with his sign that says the horse is present. Yes, indeed, there, there's horses somewhere in the artwork. Surrealism is a way of looking at things, including horses, that draws on, in part, an artist's dreams. Dreams can be very strange, and so can sur surrealistic art. Hmm, very interesting. There's a horse on his head. There's a horse running between some, looks like chess pieces in a chess game. These horses don't have a tail or a head. This horse doesn't have a tail. That's surrealistic art, art that doesn't look like the real world at all. It's more like something you imagined. Expressionism is an art style that uses exaggerated colors and brush strokes to show the emotion an artist wants us to feel when we look at something. What do you feel when you look at this? This is Blue Horse by Franz Marc. Cubism 
is a way of looking at things from different angles all at the same time. Cubists don't want to copy things the way they normally look. So here's some cubist style horses. They don't look like horses in real life, but we can still tell it's a horse. A famous artist named Picasso liked horses. He liked bulls too. He drew a lot of them. These are both Pablo Picasso paintings. Abstract art can have a subject, but it doesn't need one. It uses color and shape to create a visual experience. These abstract images do have subjects, horses and riders, of course. This artist used just a few lines and splotches of color in his woodcut, but when you look at it, you can see a galloping horse and rider, right? Can you see the galloping horse and rider there, boys and girls? I think I can. There's his front legs, see him? There's his head. What do you see when you look at branches and driftwood? The artist who made this sculpture saw a horse. This abstract drawing in space shows what looks like a big, strong horse, but you wouldn't want to sit on its back. All it is made of is thin steel wire. Ouch. An American painter named Jackson Pollock found a hobby horse head and glued it onto a canvas before doing this abstract drip painting. Pollock dripped splatters and flung the paint as a way to insert himself into his paintings. Maybe this is Pollock on a horse. See, there's the horse's head. So what do you think? Is this stuff crazy or is it crazy good? Looking at art and thinking about it is fun. There's no right or wrong way to do it. Museums are good places to find art. You can find art in other places too. One such place to look is in books. The horses shown below and to the right are from books illustrated by a, a man who never studied drawing. His name was Dr. Seuss. Dr. Seuss didn't ride horses, but he looked at them carefully and saw something in them. Can you guess what that something was? So look at that horse once again. A horse is many many things, all depending on what you see. The end. And in the back of this storybook, there's information about each of the artworks and the artists who created them. And then of course, those last two pages were some horse artwork by Dr. Seuss. There's the Dr. Seuss artwork. The end.